If you're someone who wants to start a creative hobby or just recently picked it up, you might experience moments where you feel like nothing is working and you might think maybe it's just not the right thing for you to do. You might know the techniques, you practice, you try to do whatever your teacher or mentor tells you, but in the end, you still feel stuck, frustrated, and like giving up. Because one of the things that many people forget about when it comes to making progress in any field is that developing or just having skills is not everything. It's like having a gym and all the equipment you need to exercise in your basement, you have all the tools to work out, but being able to do this consistently, even when it's so tiring and exhausting, is an entirely different story. Because next to just practicing your skills and trying to get better, you also want to develop healthy, growth-oriented mindset habits along the way. This is important because you will face challenges all the time and if you don't develop those habits, you will keep self-sabotaging your progress and even your happiness. And in this video, I wanted to make you aware of six self-sabotaging habits you might have and how to deal with them. So whenever any of those habits creep in, you know how to fight them. The first habit that is actually self-sabotaging you is the habit of chasing pointless perfectionism. You might catch yourself saying that, I'm just a perfectionist. Or maybe you say things like, I just want things to be perfect. You might even think that you being so focused on perfecting things means that you simply have high standards. But if you're honest with yourself, this attitude doesn't really help you in any way on your creative journey. It just makes you feel miserable, doesn't it? And oftentimes perfectionism disguises itself as a great hiding spot. It offers the opportunity for you to procrastinate, to keep tweaking things and to simply stall the moment of the final result. Because at the end of the day, you're simply scared of what comes next. You worry not only about what others might think of your artwork, but also what you will feel about yourself. You don't want people telling you things that you've already been secretly thinking about yourself. Maybe they are things like, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are thinking you can actually pull this off? I knew I was useless and I can do anything. And you're afraid that all these things are actually true. So you keep chasing perfectionism to reach an impossible standard just because you want to prevent this from happening and you want to prove that you're at least somewhat good and that you're worthy of calling yourself an artist or even just using those fancy supplies. And in the end, you focus so hard on the outcome that you only see mistakes and get frustrated with your own skills. You keep tweaking and tweaking your artwork until you've entirely overworked your art piece and made it even worse. And let me tell you, you are already an artist. You don't need a perfect artwork to prove this and to prove your worth because the fact that you're creating something with your own hands that hasn't been there before, it, it's all that matters. And no art is perfect. It always has mistakes because we are not machines but perfectly imperfect human beings. How can our art be anything else? And honestly, who cares if your painting is, isn't flawless? Who are you trying to impress and why are you trying to impress them in the first place? You absolutely don't have to prove anything to anyone. And that brings me to the next self-sabotaging habit and that's seeking approval from outside. Instead of trying to get proof from others that your art is good and that you're worthy of being called an artist, become your own biggest cheerleader. I used to make the mistake of showing every art piece or just craft I created to my parents who never seemed to be impressed because they either didn't like it or simply didn't get it, I don't know. So I kept trying to improve or change what I was doing to hopefully get a different reaction the next time I showcase what I created. Until I realized that there's no point in doing that. They will probably never understand and cheer you on. So I thought, why bother? So I had to become my own biggest cheerleader because 
At the end of the day, the only person you should be able to count on is yourself. In my case, my art was always compared to a famous artist and why can't I create something similar to what they created instead? So it was just like comparison schlager, how it's called. I know we all want to get feedback from the outside to be sure something we made is good or that we are on the right track, but it's really unhealthy. Remember, not everyone is the right person to ask such things, so don't do this. And as much as we sometimes want our parents or certain friends to be our biggest cheerleaders, not everyone will be that and that's okay. That's why there are Facebook groups and other online communities you can join and that are full of like-minded people who will help you on your journey. So join those groups. But here you also want to be careful because being compared to other people is not frustrating enough. We also do this to ourselves. We self-sabotage ourselves by constantly comparing ourselves to other people. Similar to chasing pointless perfectionism when you, in the end, think less of yourself when things don't look perfect, comparing yourself to others gives you another opportunity to find confirmation that you're somehow worse than others. And you might have already discovered the trend here. It always comes down to our self-worth. We always think we're not good enough because what happened in the past and our experiences. So our brain is just busy trying to find proof to show you that we actually suck. But remember, this voice is not you. It actually just wants to protect you from any possible hardships. It's like when we get negative feedback or criticism, our brain just focuses on this one little comment, even though we have hundreds of positive feedback from other people. It's just because our brain is wired to protect us and we're always on the lookout to help you stay safe and help you survive. So it's just, it's doing its job. I know it's hard not to compare your skill level to other artists when you're constantly seeing so many amazing artworks on Instagram or Pinterest, but what you might forget, and obviously our brain doesn't want to realize this, to acknowledge this, is that all these people are only sharing their highlight reels. They don't show you their struggles, their mistakes, and all the time they invested in creating their final piece. Plus, most of the time we all have no idea about how much time and effort they put into be at the point where they can actually create such artworks. We don't know their whole story and their journey until this point, so we can't compare each other. And you wouldn't tell your friend that their art sucks and that someone else is so much better than them, so why are we doing this to ourselves? And remember, creating art is not a competition. The purpose of art is to allow people to express themselves and to, to distract them from things that are happening in their lives, but also to add something into the world that hasn't been there before. To help people see what you see, what you feel, or even help them imagine their own story that will help them in any shape or form. What helps me the most is to really put my blenders on and to focus on why I'm creating art. I'm not trying to be better than someone else or trying to impress someone. And if you want to find joy in painting your own voice and a creative style, you can't do that if you're constantly scrolling through what, other, what others are doing while feeling miserable about yourself. You can only do that by disconnecting from time to time, putting your blinders on and really listening to the inner artist that has been within you from the start. And another thing you might be doing because you're so busy chasing pointless perfectionism and comparing yourself to others, you're inconsistent with your own practice. By not being consistent, you also stall your own progress. I know life can get super busy, but if being creative is essential to you for your mental health, making it a priority is key. The good news is that you don't have to create a perfect masterpiece every time you sit down to paint. Why? Because it's not only impossible, but it's also not the point. The point is to reconnect with your creative side, to relax and really explore this form of self-expression. And if you want to become better at your craft, you can't make progress with a white piece of canvas or paper. 
It's about the quantity, not the quality. Create as much art as you can, even if at least half of it or even more isn't that great. It doesn't matter. Everything counts towards your progress. So having a small sketchbook or working on smaller pieces for a few minutes a day can be such a game changer. It will not only help you relax by focusing on the task at hand and enjoy the process, but it will also help you create momentum and turn it into a habit to be more consistent. Maybe being consistent is not your problem, but perhaps you're rushing the process instead. Especially nowadays, technology becomes faster and faster while we become less and less patient as we want to get things and see results faster and faster, right? And the problem with that is that we completely forget that things take time. And you might have heard the quote that everything worth having takes time. Even if it takes you longer than someone else, you know, it doesn't matter. You're doing this for you. You're on your own unique path, so there's no point in rushing it. Life in general is a journey and lots of things just take time and you're exactly where you need to be. There's this quote, I love not rushing the process. The mind doesn't shift until it does. And when it does shift, it's right on time. Not one second too late or too soon. People are like seeds waiting to sprout. We can't be pushed ahead of our own understanding. Remember, it always comes down to our self-worth. You might think you're worse than others because it takes you longer or it's more difficult for you than others, but it has nothing to do with you. You're more than your skill level or your pace. These things don't define you. And another thing that is so common and that sabotages so many people who want to succeed in anything is the fear of failure. Because again, if something doesn't work out, the natural way of thinking is that this failure means that you're simply not good enough. You're not worthy, who do you think you are, and things like that start to pop into your head. So again, we make these outcomes mean something about ourselves. Because we are so worried that, what if something won't work out? What will it say about me? I will look like a fool and your brain will be like, see, I told you you suck. But the truth is failures are just feedback. It's only data. It's just information that you can use to get better, to improve something, see what you might have missed earlier that you haven't even thought about before, but now you know, so you can tweak something and improve. We all must detach ourselves from the outcomes. The outcomes doesn't define us. I know when we create a piece of art, we pour all our heart into it and it feels like it's part of who we are. But at the end of the day, it's something we created. It's not a mirror of our self-worth. Again, we don't create art to reach pointless perfectionism, to avoid criticism, to be compared to others, and to seek validation from other people to tell us that we're worthy. We create art because we want to express ourselves in a way that words can't do it and we want to get lost in the process of putting paint on paper and see what new things emerge from nothing. But most importantly, we do this to challenge ourselves by learning new things, not only about the craft, but also about ourselves. And we can't do that if you don't embrace failure and fail as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, without failure, there is no growth. And if you're afraid of wasting your supplies or your time because you're worried that things might not work out, I can tell you that nothing is a waste, but it's a waste to do nothing at all. And this is the reason I created my watercolor book, No Fail Watercolor, because I wanted you to develop the courage to learn new things, build confidence not only in your skills, but also in yourself. Because even if you fail, there are no failures. You either win or you learn and you're all for it. So if you're ready to embrace this new side of you, check out the link in the description box down below so you can learn more about this book and grab your own copy. I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.